Right, Gene? Hello? Yeah, hi. How are you? Where am I? How are you? Oh, um, um, mostly good. I'd like to get yes. rid of my crutch. I'd like to get rid of my crutch, but that's probably not going to be till April, late April or May. Oh, you don't get anything done until then? That's it right now. Um, I scheduled it this morning and that was the first opening and we still are trying to work out whether uh, for sure, absolutely, in writing, the two doctors are trying to work out whether Kaiser will cover this since it's uh, technically out of network for an Idaho doctor in an Idaho hospital. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Hi, Betsy. Well, yeah, it's too bad you can't have it sooner during this cold weather. <laughs> well, I've actually been working on it for uh, uh, trying to get this worked out for um, six weeks. Oh. And it's just drags on and on and on and on. Mm -hmm. Hi, Dick. Luba. Betsy, wow. They're all muted. Hey. Unmute you guys. Luba, unmute. Luba, unmute. <laughs> we might have a crisis. <laughs> uh, 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 I am unmuted now. There oh, you are. good, good. You have a very professional looking background. Who? Luba. Really? Professional? Oh, you've got one of those fake backgrounds. <laughs> no, it's just blurred. <laughs> Nothing fake. It's real, but blurry. Oh, okay. We we learned how to do that during one of the Kirkara um, sessions. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's some setting that you can do if you've got a messy household, Jean, and you don't <laughs> want anybody to see it. <laughs> well, now, Tom, your, your background's all faded out. Did you do that? Yep. Well, how do you do that? So, Lynn, um, Jean, you just go down to your video where it says, in the bottom of your Zoom screen where it says stop video, and there's a little tiny arrow pointing up to the right. You click on it, and in the background, it'll in the selections, one of them is blur my background. You can choose that. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hey, Hi. Hello. Hey. Doug. Hey. hey. We have to ask where you're at, Doug. <laughs> I am in uh, Santa Cruz, La Laguna. Oh, boy. In, oh, in the yeah. western highlands of Guatemala, <laughs> on on the shores of Lake Atitlan. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I'm in paradise, frankly. <laughs> well, good. Lucky you. Yeah, I feel very fortunate. <laughs> How are you all doing? Good. Hi, hi, Dick and Dan and everybody. Yeah, I was in. Uh... Costa Rica for a week about a month ago. Yeah, oh. it, is, it, is, it is quite a, quite a paradise there compared to here. Yeah, <laughs> weather wise, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's spring. It's spring here. <laughs> for year round, summer. <laughs> yeah. Spring nearly all year long. Yep. Well, or spring to spring to summer, probably not much winter. No, no, it's it's yeah, it's yeah, I think it may. It's the it's dry season, wet season. With oh. temperatures with yeah. temperatures in the fifties to eighty year round, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's dry season it was dry season in Costa Rica and I was at twenty seven hundred feet elevation, uh, about about eighty to ninety degrees typically. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's it's five thousand feet here. Oh, hi, Jean. Oh, hi there. <laughs> uh, good to see you all. Yeah, it's five thousand feet here, and uh, hi, Luba. Hi. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so yeah, it doesn't get above eighty. Hmm. Strong, strong sun. 
I can tell that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three three volcanoes within sight. <laughs> You gonna go? Are you gonna go visit any of them, Doug? Uh, uh, not, not that close. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna climb one. Well, I, when I was in Costa Rica, I took a little tour from San Jose. Just got on a little bus and went up and visited the volcano. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you're not like really quite on it, but it was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah our <laughs> friend that we were staying with, uh, mostly <laughs> old, is a UU. Here, she and her husband four years ago retired down there, and just after our trip, a couple of weeks later, she uh, showed us pictures from the top of the highest peak, in Costa Rica, Chiripo. So oh. she made it up. Yeah. Wow, cool! Twelve thousand feet, something. Twelve thousand over twelve thousand feet elevation. You're right. Wow. Well, I think we probably have all the board members that we're going to get tonight. So I'm ready to call the meeting to order. I do not have um, the uh, the usual privileges I have with Zoom, sometimes get with Zoom to uh, so that I can share my screen. So if you guys are going to need to follow along in your copy of the agenda, uh, it was sent out in email by our admin team a few days ago with the usual links for the week. Mm -hmm. The attachment is the agenda. And I sent it to the board, I don't know, two or three days ago. Um, does anybody need an agenda to follow along with or are we good? We're good. Okay. Stu, let's get started. Um, so, the very first item, since I'm talking about the agenda, is to amend the agenda that we have in front of us or add, if needed, or approve it as it is. So, Tom, you called me before uh, a little bit ago. Do you want me to add that item about down in the unfinished business area? Um, yeah, under that, I'd like to add um, a introduction of an amendment to the article nine public relations that Lynn and I worked on, that would be under, that would be item under number 10, unfinished business B. And then as you and I discussed um, that E-team and the donation issue probably should be as a C under unfinished business. Just so that- What do you want, what do you want for B? Um, there's, it would be a discussion, introduction of an idea for a, an amendment to the bylaws that Lynn and I just completed this morning, and it would, would be something that we would would bring up and okay. not take action because it involves getting input from Todd. So it would just be a um, very slight discussion of it, and then it would be on the agenda for March in more detail. Okay. So that'd be C under, under that'd be adding a B and a C under number 10, unfinished business. Okay. Anything else? Betsy, Any would you clarify? Sure. Um, our guests supposed to just speak up when the issue that they want to talk about comes along, or are we to wait till the end of the meeting to make comments? No, that's a really good question, Jean. I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, sometimes I've seen it done. Mm -hmm. I don't know the, technically the answer to the question. I'd have to go dig it up. Um, but I guess if I had to, I mean, the technical answer. Generally, I would say that um, the folks from the congregation that are visiting or observing the board meeting can raise their hands. If we have time, we can include you in the discussion. But generally, we need to hear from the board and make sure everybody on the board discusses some motion or item and that we get through, you know, on time. So. Okay, and you're using the... Um hand raising device under reactions correct yes ma'am okay you can you can also if you want since you got your camera on you can do like this i know tom does that a lot too and that's perfectly <laughs> fine you know okay. if you got your camera on that that's fine too and I, and i since i'm facilitating the whole thing will do my best to include your um comments okay How about that? thank you you betcha 
Okay, Tom, I added two things to the unfinished business. I called it the bylaw amendment from Lynn and Tom in lieu of any other content or description of what that is. And I called it the endowment team. Uh, well, it's not, not really an update, but I don't know what to call it exactly. Info. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right. Anything else for the agenda or any other questions like Jean's before we get, get rolling through the items? Okay, the next thing is to uh, approve and or amend uh, the minutes from our January 24th meeting. That also came out with the agenda on Monday. I think I sent those things there. I don't know if Rebecca sent those out, but hopefully you had a chance to look at them. And is there any changes to the minutes as seen? Okay, hearing no changes, we will approve them as they stand, as delivered by Marilyn. Marilyn's not here tonight. Uh, she will make the minutes for this tonight's meeting from the recording. Some things about technology are super cool. So thank you, Marilyn, when you listen to this, for taking our minutes and uh, efficiently sending them along to us. Appreciate it. Okay, next up on the agenda, our, I was just going to give an update. Of course, Todd's out on his sabbatical this month, so we don't have a, a minister's report. So I'm going to just try to run through a few things that uh, I want to make sure everyone's aware of or things that have happened to tell you about. So the first item was the uh, budget summit is coming up the first week in March. So for folks that are new on the board, um, there is a, a a well-defined process for uh, creating the budget and the very first step public step in a way is this budget summit and it's a meeting and there's lots of preparation that's why i say the first public step there's lots of preparation by our admin team ops team i should say um to get that ready but it is the first step in the budgeting process so if you can attend it's usually in the afternoon um a couple of hours scheduled on on Zoom, so everybody can attend. Um, it's a great it's a great thing to uh, participate in if you can. Uh, when Dick, I didn't ask you, Dick, if you were going to be ready for that budget treasurer's report a little bit later. In the uh, I was going to talk about more about the <clears throat> issue of uh, fundraising because the right. because the okay. budget has, yeah, that's that's next month really. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. True. True. Mm. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, I do know Rebecca Adams. I think it suggested 6 p.m. March 6th, but Bill Morkel said he couldn't make it then. 6 p.m.? That's really late. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so that, that remains, so that we need to get a time on that. And, and, right. Uh, it's, right. It's usually 1 o'clock. I expect I thought I saw that somewhere. It's not, right. That's my memory anyway. Yeah, okay. But anyway, we need to get, get that down and... Um, See, is the financial team organizing this, or mm, um, that? they they attend for sure. Member because I've been on the finance team okay. and the treasurer too, and you. But it's not confined to those teams or those groups. Anybody can attend, right? Yeah, right, right. It's organized. Yeah. It's organized by Rebecca, though, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. meeting itself, mm -hmm. and she's the main presenter because that's the, a budget will have been a draft budget will have been put together. Generally speaking, Re um, Rebecca and Todd will have that. I don't know, Jean, you've been on the ops team. Dan, <laughs> I guess I'm calling on folks. Maybe you guys go through that as part of the ops team before the summit, too. <coughs> I'm not really sure. Um, yes. Um, <laughs> can you refresh my memory? Who is on the finance team? Well, Bill Moore killed for sure. Um, I know. I'm not sure who else. There are there is somebody else. Donna is still part of that team. Who then? Donna Borden Rhodes. Oh, is she? I thought she was retiring from the finance team. I think there's yeah. <laughs> I think she tried to, but has not yet. Okay. She's also on the ops team and Robert just um overheard us and said that that is scheduled for March 6th at 1 p.m. Right. 
Okay. Right, but if, if that if Bill can't make it there and he's a key person, that you might want to consider changing it too. Well, we'll leave that scheduling kind yeah, of. Yeah, leave that to them anyway. Yes, yes, let's do that. Because there's nothing anyway, sacred. There's nothing sacred about that. <clears throat> I, I don't think. <laughs> um. Uh, okay, so that was item A under my president's update. Item B is what I've termed the ops team policy on church communications. So this kind of goes back to uh, a situation that occurred in, um, or at least it first came to my attention in December. It had something to do with a, uh, a communication that was submitted for the Sun uh, for a joint effort. And then a, a joint effort or a joint event between our church and the INUDC. And so the only reason I'm mentioning it here, I don't really have any updates on this, and it is an ops team policy. I'm just kind of putting it out there that there's some thinking still underway and discussions underway. I'm not like proposing an amendment or asking for any action from the board uh, on this item. Just this is by way of a public service announcement, if you will, that it's that thoughts are still happening on this topic. Um, and then the last item on my uh, update is to just let you know, again, more public service announcements, if you will, or updates, is that the nominating team are at work. Um, I've been in communication with them. They were asking me for what our open positions are. And I want to thank Tom and Dick Steele for making readable, trackable tables of that information so it was just a matter and then providing it to me when I couldn't find it uh it was just a matter of passing that along we have two to Jan Wigginroth is leading the nominating team this year um they're out uh, scouring the folks for people that want to join the board we have two open positions for the 24-25 well actually two three-year terms I guess because we're three years I think both of them are full three-year terms that we have open. So um, that's underway. Um, I think I think Dick Steele's also going to be uh, serving with the nominating team as a former board member and as a former board president too. Another kind of thing that we had in our bylaws just to assist with that that process. So and liaise about what the board's been up to. So that's it for all of my updates. Any questions or comments about any of that stuff? Other thoughts to add to it? Jean's waving her hand. And so yes, um, will the congregation be notified that um, they're accepting, you know, if anyone in the congregation wants to be on the board, are they being notified that this is being considered right now? Oh, you're talking about communications from the nominations team? Yes, I am. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. It's a good question. Needs to. How are they brought? How are they marketing? In other words, or how are they putting it out there? Well, his, his, historically, that has been done, and Nancy is um, has been advising them of what's going on in the past. So I assume it will take place, but. Well, I think it's very important that that take place. I'll just throw that in. How have you seen it done, Jean? Well, it's been done various ways, but I think it's important that the congregation be informed that, that now's the time to make their request if they want to be on the board. Okay. All right. I can, <clears throat> I would be happy to. Pass that along to Jean. I'm sorry, Jane. <laughs> sorry, Jean. Jan. Julie, did you want yeah, to? I, I have my hand up. I just wanted to confirm that um, this coming Sunday being partner church lunch after the second service that both mem members from the INUUC and Westminster have been informed and invited. So yes. hopefully okay, great. not a problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you for uh, 
sharing that info. I forgot about that. You did call and tell me about that event. I should have put that in my update too. Partner Church Sunday is a big deal. Very cool. Thanks, Julie. Um, I see a hand there from Lynn. Thank you. What's up, Lynn? I just wanted to make a comment about um, the experience I had when I was president of the board and speaking with the nominating team when they were in their search yeah. for Thanks. people. Yeah. The way that that worked, they actually have an internal policy on the nominating team that they don't publicize um, to the entire church congregation if you are interested to come see us, but they do publicize that they are they are in search so that the congregation knows that they will be approaching people, but not that just anybody and everybody who might um, consider wanting to do that would be necessarily a great fit. That's the whole point of having a nominating team. Hmm. Good. That's different. Mm -hmm. Dan? Yeah, very quickly. Um, I haven't been to a board meeting in a while. Who is on the nominating team? Uh, Jan Wigginroth is leading it. Um, somebody, was it Tom who just, or Lynn, who said that Nancy's still on it and advising, Nancy Avery, I assume, because she's been doing nominating team for such a long no, time. No, she's not on it, but she was advising them okay. at the end of there her term. Okay. So, it's a three member team. It was reduced in the major overhaul of the bylaws, reduced from five members to, to um, three. Chan, Nancy, and who's the third? Not Nancy. I don't know. I Betty. Don't know. Betty Bradbo. She's right here. She's oh, at the oh, I believe she's. Betty is. Okay, good. I think Betty's on well, it. Um, just to. That's a very important team. So. I just wondered uh, who was on it. That sounds good. I'll shut up. We're, we're doing our, I think we'll make it through our agenda tonight. Just let me check the time. Oh, yeah, we're doing good. Any other Tom thoughts? Has a hand. Tom? Well, um, it's just it, very interesting between Jean's comment and Lynn's comment, and um, you know, I guess it's probably up to the nominating team. Certainly, anybody who expresses interest isn't going to necessarily be nominated. And I think maybe Jean's point, if I if I'm thinking what you were, were thinking, Jean, is to let people know so they can express interest. That doesn't mean they're going to get nominated. The nominating team has a real interest in making sure that people that are going to be nominated for the board are people who they believe are qualified to be on the board. So that's a subjective decision, but how they actually do that, I don't know. Well, I know at the beginning of the year the the board made a, a pledge to be transparent and I think that's part of being transparent is letting people know when things are happening. Okay. You ready to move on? I'm about to ready to turn it over to you, Dick, for our treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think every our policy now is every three months we have a Full quarterly report, but what came up this last month was the issue of fundraising, and it seems like there's a uh, concern that we need a lot more fundraising to uh, properly fund our budget. And you know, Todd had to cut back quite a bit this year, um, and I found out that there is no fundraising team. <laughs> and uh, so, one of my recommendations would be that there actually be a fundraising team with, with it. A recognized chair that is, um, I'm not sure how that would be chosen, but I think we 
we clearly need a fundraising team that goes beyond just the uh, traditional. And Rebecca Adams told me about all the funds they get from uh, like usages, uh, different groups that use the church. And that's quite a bit. And But there are limitations on that kind of thing too. So she's very much aware of that. But uh, she beyond things like uh, using the church and whatever, the, it seems like there's a big need for maybe a, a variety of events that would maybe be fun events, for example, but also would raise uh, numerous community building events that would raise funds. Another possibility of or would be events that would maybe joint fundraisers with other groups in the communities where we split the proceeds and get part of that. Again, that would be part of outreach. There's a lot of this, I think, should be in form of outreach to our own members or to the larger community. Okay. Uh, and another point there is we do have quite a few people now coming in by Zoom. I don't know yet how much uh, they are pledging. I'm, I'm pledging a certain amount, but there may be room for more uh, uh, contacts, like personal contacts, phone calls and whatnot to people who are uh, attend regularly on Zoom or even occasionally may want to contribute. Um, so th th those are a few of a few of my ideas. But I, th I think if you have a regular team that looks at it, uh, they can come up with even more ideas and figure out where the energy is and, and get something moving on this. Um, yeah. Well, um... As all of you know, that was the survey question last put out by the um, shared ministry team. Um, and a lot of, I hope that you forwarded your suggestions in the survey that they requested that. And um, I don't know when they will report, but I hope it's in a timely fashion that can help with our uh, upcoming fundraising, which is going to be pretty crucial. Yeah, so I think, again, there are many opportunities if other people have, but it needs to be more organized. It's not just going to sort of happen. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Rebecca has made it pretty clear that she, you know, she's uh, she's working sort of the business part of stuff, but not the more outreach social kinds of things. But she did reveal there's some gap in the pledge or gap in the pledging income or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, but the, the the big thing is they want to be able to. You know, Todd had to cut back but a quarter or something like that in his compensation this last time, and and then there's clearly people want to fully fund him, <laughs> and and be in, in a mode of expansion, not contraction. Uh, you know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any idea, Dick, how we're doing since we didn't have a quarterly report at the end of, uh, you know, for, for December 31st? Do you have any idea how we're doing with our current fundraising camp campaign uh, for the existing pledges for this fiscal year? Well, on the last report, it was pretty much uh, on track as far as, I, as far as I know. If you look at you know, what what was expected to be. I mean, I, I think there's less less comment less comes in during the summer and things like that. But if you looked at, at the expectation, things were looking um, reasonable in terms of pledges coming in. So that's, that's my understanding. But we'll, we'll next month we'll get we'll get an update on that. But I expect that will continue that the pledges will be coming in at a reasonable place uh, pace. But we're going to need more pledges or more fundraising, and and I think. Again, I think if if we do community building things, you know, fundraising, that's going to be that will build our our pledge base also eventually in our membership. Jean, do you still have your hand up? Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or thoughts on Dick's report? Well, Tom. Well, one other thing that some of us have discussed is, um, and this is part of what we will eventually hear from the endowment team, I think, is that we are at the point of all of our ages, majority of our ages, and it's actually happening that we are losing members because they're dying. 
And that means that in, uh, they, they don't complete their pledge. And that's part of what the issue is that we'll hear about from Karen Dorn Steele the next meeting. So that cuts off the income for the current year. And then it also cuts off income for future years because uh, those pledges aren't going to be there anymore. And my our understanding in the past is it takes about five new members starting to pledge to equal one um, one one member who's been a senior member and has been pledging for a number of years. It takes about five people to replace that amount of money. So just look at the stats. Um, we are not in very good shape. Mm -hmm. Um, we may see that in the next report. We'll have to see if that's coming through or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because also some people who are the long-term members who die will leave a bequest uh, to help out for a while. Yeah. Who, do you know who else is on the finance team, Dick? Hmm? You just, do you know who is on the finance team? Have you joined um, one of their meetings? I don't recall right now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So my my memory is not that good. Yeah. Well, no, that's fine. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I know Bill Moorfield's on there for sure. Yeah. So okay. He has ideas of this fundraising. I, I figured it was Bill and Rebecca and me and my I can't remember who else. Yeah. Maybe Don White. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um. <clears throat> let's move on then. If unless there's anything but, else, but I guess if if we make recommendation for a fundraising team how does that work do we need a bylaw amendment or something no 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 you don't need a bylaw or even approval i remember this clearly from you know, sometime in the past i mean we, um, we would need an official board establishment of of no i think no i don't think, think so i don't oh, think okay. so we can we can ask Tom, you know, to go dig around in the bylaws for us. But I'm pretty yeah, sure okay. if a group wants to get together and be a team and do something, like uh, in the example that Todd used in a meeting I was in, I don't know years ago, was a men's team could get together to, you know, do study a book together. They don't need they don't need any kind of blessing from anybody to form a group and do something. Well, so something as important as fundraising, and we might want to. Uh, operation I have a nominating committee that nominates people <laughs> or something like that for example yeah you know, so well, it, might, it might not just happen we have to maybe get some direction well we oh. do have kind of fundraising teams actually they're just not called that <laughs> okay right yeah uh, yeah uh, various we, teams. We, we need to find someone to sort of put it together yeah, right, right who knows how vital they are either those teams you know in okay. terms of their meeting or achieving things yeah because I, again i think it's going to be vital not just for money but for expanding the membership if we do this right mm -hmm. tom well the, the actually I, i'm just trying to scan the bylaws right now the operations team it, one of their tasks is to recognize um officially recognize new groups or teams that want to be formed for a specific purpose um, they, it's also pretty standard procedure that the board can appoint committees or teams that would work at the, under the, uh, umbrella of, of the board. So we do have a process, but we have to have, and, and whether that's, um, finding people as the board might do to say, we, we're going to have this committee and then find a chair and appoint people to a committee or to have, um, the finance team um, expand itself to have a working group that would be recognized as the generosity team or the pledge campaign team by the operations team. But the operations team has a very distinct role um, to um, to to recognize groups and teams, and that that's in the bylaws. Okay, there you go. Quick answer. Do you want to speak, Betty? I do. Um, am I on? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, it took me a minute to get my computer signed on. I couldn't. I couldn't get myself unmuted during the discussion about the um, nominating oh, team. And okay. um, what Lynn said is 
the way that I was um, told as far as um, how we would run the uh, nominating campaign for, for the two members that um, it'll be out there that we're searching, but uh, we are not requesting people to put their names on the list. So that's, that's the way I understand that it's working. And Lisa Conger and uh, Jan Wigginroth and myself are on the team. Oh, great. Oh, are you going to ask the general membership if they have suggestions for new board members, or is that not? Uh, that that wasn't the way that I was told that we would do okay. it. That it would be out. The information would be out there that we'd be looking for two people with. Uh, mm -hmm. And we do have kind of a short list of people that we have talked with in the past, and and um, it didn't work out for them at that time because of. Uh, you know other commitments and so we were going to revisit those names of people and um and then once the word is out that we're looking to you who um might approach us more so than putting out a bid and asking people for stuff um, that, yeah well that's what i know so okay. far okay tom well, I, I did just find in the bylaws under the operations team, it says the team shall decide whether to recognize or approve or reestablish as affiliated with a church, a proposed or pre-existing team or a group. And that team uh, shall not, or the ops team shall not appoint the teams or members, uh, but any group or member recognized or approved by the team with permission of the team may establish its own rules to operate in various protocols. Thank you. Uh, uh, Tom, Tom, send me that. Would you say what? I think Doug wants you to please send him that little snippet of the bylaws that you just found. I said send send me that. Uh, uh, okay. I've got a I'm making a note now. When is your hand up? Okay, go for it. Yes, I just wanted to um, just give you a little bit of a heads up that um, the, the survey results are in that the shared ministry team put out and there are some lovely, wonderful ideas. We have not meant yet to discuss those survey results, but people from the congregation um, gave us lots of um, some I actually I should say some really good ideas about fundraising and there are people very aware of our position and certainly very interested in this but we want to um and we will give you a report as soon as we get that all together it's tricky to get people i mean lots of good ideas out there but not necessarily people wanting to do those or head them <laughs> so we want to take a little bit of time to um to maybe uh, just get a little bit of more information from people and and reach out to them and see if they would be willing so to work on some of their cool ideas that they have. So I think it's a little bit in the works and we're just maybe a month um, shy. So I'm hoping in March we'll have a little bit more information for you. But I also have been working with Rebecca a little bit behind the scenes and um, trying to get it uh, prepared for our generosity campaign, which is typically run through the month of April. And we have a theme. And uh, I just sent her a little write up for that that she's going to peruse. And so um, there are some things in the works and it it's, I'm hoping going to be pretty exciting. And I think it will be pretty inspiring and people hopefully will um, step up to the plate. One of the things I think we have to be super clear about um, with everyone in our church is the importance and the responsibility of pledging and and not only pledging but maintaining that pledge and certainly also particularly when people are in leadership roles that um, the, those pledges remain in place throughout that pledging year not and and not used as weapons which we have seen in the past in our congregation from previous um, members where 
they get a little upset about something and then they uh, either drop their pledge or encourage others to drop their pledge within a pledging year, which is fine for people, but I believe it is not fine for people in leadership roles <laughs> within the church. So um, this is a conversation I think that we, we need to keep talking about the importance of um, we, we will die if people get mad and take their ball and bat and walk out. Yeah. So anyway, I think uh, that being said, hold off one more month in, in March, we'll bring you some, some good ideas and hopefully some people willing to, to work on some of those good ideas that they have, that they've offered. Cool, thank you, Lauren. Okay, uh, anything else? We're ready to move on to the ops team report from Doug. Oh, Jean, yes? Yes. Um, when when Betty um, Gradable spoke, she said, yes, we are letting people know <laughs> that, that the nominating committee is looking for people. And then she said, we're not going to contact the congregation as a whole about the fact that we're looking for new board members. So which is it going to be? Um, Jean, it, in my in my thoughts, it, and I can't say that this has happened yet, is I'm thinking that it has been in the sun that we're going to be looking for new, two new members. Okay. But I, but I can't say that I've read it, so I guess I don't know for sure. That's what I have in my brain. And we have not had a nominating team committee meeting yet. Okay. Um, that that's where I have in my thoughts that that's where it would go, but we are not going to, in my opinion, we're not going to put a note in saying contact mm -hmm. myself or Jan or Lisa to volunteer. So okay, that's but if if the board to... should decide that that that's what they want you to do, then that's what you would do, correct? Um, I uh, will certainly talk about it. I think they have a, they have a, uh, we, we have a set of whatever ahead, law, laws or guidelines. Yes, exactly. So, they have the nominating team has, uh, is definitely in the bylaws, Gene, and has things governing how they operate. So mm -hmm. I think maybe we need to, and the board doesn't tell the nominating team how to work. That's just part of our problem. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Who up the other one? Who's in the pecking order? Oh, yeah. Um, Let's not go into governance at this moment. Let's okay. move on and talk about ops team liaison. The ops okay. team liaison report. Doug, if you are able. Okay. I know you are at the, actually at the meeting. Yeah. A report from the back. Yeah. Uh, am I coming through okay? Yes. Sounds good. Good. Uh, yeah, the ops team met on uh, February 13th, and yeah, I was in transit to Guatemala, so I've got uh, Rebecca to uh, give me a, a you know summary. She hasn't uh, done the minutes yet, but uh, the uh, the ops team reviewed the updated preliminary budget for the budget summit uh, on on March 6th uh, and discussed the need for more volunteers and leadership for stronger fundraising a task the shared ministry team is really working on, as, as Lynn has stated. Uh, annual tax work is complete and quarterly financial reports are complete. Um, we are currently right on track with our annual budget as long as things continue as they have been going with revenues and expenses. Uh, have found a contractor to replace the compromised uh, fire doors in the RE wing and are working on having those replaced uh, so we can be compliant with fire code. And that is it. Good. Thank you, Doug. Any, uh -huh. questions? any questions for Doug? Any other ops team updates? All right, um, Tom, you're up for the next two items. They are the bylaw amendments that you sent us all out in email. 
Um, there is one uh, for the Memorial Garden. We've been working on this one for a little while now. And I think there are motions actually, is that right, Tom? There's motions in in the uh, documents that you sent for both of these, the Memorial Garden and the Seven Principles. That's, that's correct. Just uh, a little bit in advance as the board and others will recall, we sent, um, we, we came up some wording with, with some wording, two options to put in the bylaws as an amendment to recognize the Memorial Garden. And we sent those two along with a third option of no action whatsoever to the uh, Memorial Garden team. And we got that while, I don't know how many of you, but I did since I was the secretary of the board who sent that on to the Memorial Garden team. We got back um, um, a memo from Linda Green, uh, which uh, recommended essentially the one of the amendments. So that um, I will propose a motion and uh, make this available uh, to um, our recording secretary. I move that after consultation with and support of the Memorial Garden team, which voted three to two in favor of the amendment, the UUCS Board of Trustees bring before the 2024 UUCS membership annual meeting, the following bylaw amendment to Article 1 with resulting subsequent remembering. And that would be a new Section 8, which would read UUCS shall establish and maintain, comma, in perpetuity, comma, a memorial garden, period. So that is my motion to the board. Uh, second that motion. Okay, is there any discussion? And by the way, I posted it in the chat, uh, what Tom just read. It's also in your email the document that he sent out. I um, can't remember when exactly, in the last few days. But it's in the chat if you want to look there to, to read through. And we're now at the point of uh, we've had a motion and a second, and we're in discussion. It's fine to me. Okay. Thank you, Dave. Mm -hmm. Hang on a second, Jean. Anybody else on the board have any thoughts on this motion to add an amendment for approval? It's not, we're not amending the bylaws, just to remind you, we're just putting an amendment proposal out there. We have to put that in front of the congregation in June. Anybody else on the board want to discuss? No. Nope. Okay. Good. Thank you, Luba. Jean, go ahead. Okay. It seems to me that amendments should go directly from the congregation to the annual meeting and that the board should neither say yay or nay on on whether a, an amendment goes to the annual meeting. I suppose you could make an amendment to the bylaws, Gene, to change the amendment process, which is what you're suggesting. Well, I just read the amendment process and there's nothing in there about the board approving amendments. Well, we're not we're not approving the amendment. That's, that was my um, little injunction a minute ago. We're just approving a proposed amendment to put before the congregation in June so that they can say yay or nay. We cannot, as a board, change the bylaws. This, okay, but you, 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 but everyone could vote nay. Might, might I That's point out, this discussion is not addressing the amendment before the board. Okay, thank you, Tom. So I uh, could everybody on the board, please, if you approve of this uh, motion, on the table right now uh, that is in the chat and that Tom read to us, please either raise your hand. You can raise your actual hand or you can do the raise hand with the Zoom. Either will work. So there's one, two, three, four. Catherine, are you voting? Uh-oh, Catherine's texting me. Hang on a minute, guys. 
Oh, she says I approve. <laughs> She's on my text. <laughs> okay, so the motion passes. Um, in, next, Tom, next. That was the memorial garden. You want to take us through the similar. This is a very similar process where um, the board is being asked to approve uh, a proposed amendment. Okay, what I'm there's been discussion about um, adding the seven principles to um, our bylaws. And um, I, as a board member, would like to put that before the congregation. And in order to ensure that it comes before the congregation, um, I move that the UUCS board bring before the uh, 2024 membership meeting, a bylaw amendment to establish the current Unitarian Universalist seven principles as an addition to Article 1. And if this motion is approved, a specific amendment will be presented to the board for consideration at the March 2024 board meeting. Second. Okay. okay thank you. Yeah. So we have a second. Now we're in discussion. Yeah, let me let me let me address that. I didn't want to spend the time to exactly find out where what might be the best place for it. Probably in 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 Article One, since that's where we have these kinds of things. But if the board approves this, it's kind of a direction for me and maybe in consultation with another board member to find where to put it and exactly how to word the introduction to the seven principles. So it's just an instruction that the board would like to proceed with this or that the board does not want to proceed with this and either just not have it at all or wait till someone brings it forth from the congregation as a as a member uh, amendment. So that, that's my introduction to the motion as the motion maker. Okay. So um, can I ask why? Why we want to add the Unitarian Universalist seven principles to the bylaws? I can address what's that. Your mm -hmm. What's your thinking? Uh, okay. I, I can address that too, because there are, there are many, many churches in the UA who always have the seven principles in their own church bylaws, but many, many don't. It's been somewhat hit or miss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if this new Article 2 uh, that's proposed now passes at the General Assembly, the uh, the seven principles will no longer be there. Um, I think six of them will still be in the hidden, or you know, some of the wording will, of some of those will still be in these new values, but they'll be kind of dispersed and somewhat distorted, and they won't be a separate list. And the, the principle number six on world community will be missing entirely. So there's a very strong movement to retain these as a separate entity, a separate list, because that's what means a lot to a lot of us, rather than have them sort of dispersed and maybe re reinterpreted and subject to various covenants and things like that. Thank you. But Nancy, could I get a clarification? Sure, go, Doug. On, on, on Gene's point. So this is, we're approving that this, uh, like the first, Tom's first amendment, be uh, put out there to the congregation. We're not giving an opinion on it one way or the other. Is that right? Well, I mean, uh, from my reading of what, and I'll paste, I'll put this in the chat too. What was in Tom's document, and and it 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 goes along with what Tom just said, which is that this isn't the language for an amendment that we are considering to bring before the congregation in June, as a board of trustees. This is a motion to start researching, putting together an amendment to put before all of us in March. Is that accurate, Tom? Yeah, it's just an instruction to proceed um, to make something kind of specific like the one was with the Memorial Garden, which section it would be in. Um, right, right. And we kind of went through the we went through the same process with the Memorial Garden. Now it's a little further down the road. This one that we just motion we just approved is amendment ready. And uh, seven principles not amendment ready yet. 
I guess, is what. And so we're just kind of saying, yeah, sure, let's look into it. And Dick gave some ideas about why, I guess, because it's potentially disappearing as as part of the bylaws of the UUA, which we are still of which we are still a member, and could mean a lot to a lot of people. Yeah, in fact, that's the most controversial thing about the new provision. There's a whole, some of you know, there's a whole separate group called Save the Seven Principles who wants to save them as a separate entity because mm -hmm. they've been so important to us. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think they're not being saved simply because there's a group of people out there who want to sort of bury them and subject them to various uh various interpretations and things like that and restrictions and contexts, uh, different contexts or not have them at all. Uh, and so that that's a very, that's probably, in fact, there was a proposed amendment, one of the proposed amendments at the last General Assembly would be to retain them as a uh, separate list, pretty much as, as they are now. They could be tweaked a little bit, of course, but but they're pretty good as the way they are. And this amendment was voted down because the uh, the ARCA II Commission itself had one of their members recommend against it. And it, it turns out the way the General Assembly ran this last time, uh, about three quarters of the delegates just passed whatever the ARCA II Commission recommended it, lockstep. It's kind of an unusual thing. Normally in the past, there's been a lot of independent thinking and that's kind of disappeared uh, we hope to we hope to get some of that back but we don't know what what's going to happen this time thanks dick any other discussion board not board anybody on this topic oh yes i i would like to comment um what I'm disagreeing with here is the process that the board is using right now. Um, the Memorial Garden team sent in an amendment in its completed form that we intend to propose to the congregation at the annual meeting. And um, we were asked to do this early so that the board wouldn't have so much to consider you know, as the year goes along. But nevertheless, this amendment was proposed in its final form. And point so- of, Point of order, Madam President. This is, in, has got an issue that she liked to talk about, but it's not the right time to talk about it where there's a motion on the floor. Okay. The motion being the motion about the seven principles. We kind of moved past the, yeah, it, thank you, Tom. The discussion at the moment, Jean, is about the seven principles. I understand. Okay. Okay. Did you have some discussion? Any other discussion on the seven principles amendment proposal? No. Amendment research proposal. Okay, let's vote. Is there on this motion, as it's seen in your chat, um, which is um, to research where a seven principles amendment would best fit and then bring it to the board as a potential amendment, bylaw amendment. All those in favor, raise your hand. Actual hand or Catherine. Catherine gave me a thumbs up. Okay. Passes. All right. Um, last thing for you, Tom, is policies and procedures additions, 3.2C and 3.2D. The right. policies and procedures team are for the Board of Trustees. They're not the bylaws, so we're switching to a different governance document at this moment. These are um, don't have to be approved by the congregation. These are how we operate as board of trustees. So go ahead, Tom. 
Um, in the last meeting, I brought up four topics that we didn't have time to get to, and they were, um, so I'm coming to this meeting with, with two of the suggestions that we consider adopting as part of our policies and procedures. And in the policies and procedures 3.2, which is entitled board job descriptions, um, it has an introductory sentence or two and then kind of concludes with consequently the products or job description of the board shall be, and then it lists an A and a B, which I'm not including in my motion. We just leave those as they are. But the way it would, my motion reads is I move the following additions to the policy and procedures as 3.2 board job description C and D. And let's take these separately so that we are voting on them separately rather than trying to join them together. C would be that the board shall be able to make a presentation of proposed amendments to the Articles of Incorporation and bylaws as deemed necessary by the majority of the trustees present. The majority in our case of, it's typically as those board members present. Today we have, for instance, six board members present because Lilia is not here. So it would take a majority would be would be 50% plus. So that would be four. So there, there, this would say that a presentation of a proposed amendment to the Articles of Incorporation and Bylaws as deemed necessary by a majority of the trustees present. So that needs a second. Second. Okay, then as the maker of the motion, let me just say that if you go into Robert's Rules of Orders, the governing body is allowed to make um, proposed amendments to the Articles of Incorporation or bylaws as a governing body. So technically, we don't need this. But on the other hand, that's really digging into the minutia of the 742 page Robert's Rules of Order. And I'm just suggesting that we clarify that with as far as the board's concerned, it's perfectly legitimate for the board to propose amendments to the Articles of Incorporation or the bylaws. In fact, that's what we have done for many, many meetings. And that's what, in fact, we did with a major overhaul of the bylaws that we called a revision rather than amendment. So that's my explanation about why this is something the board should actually have in its policies and procedures. And this would actually send that proposal to the a congregational meeting, is that correct? No, I mean, our oh. board policies and procedures are strictly only adopted by the board. And oh, this is, this is a board policy and procedure you're talking about? Yes, the board, the, the extensive policy and procedures document is the governing uh, document for the governing body of the church. Hmm. And it's extent, it's, it's, I don't know, five or six pages long and contains extensive um, information. In the last couple of meetings, a few meetings ago, um, we adopted a revise, a revision of that, that Lynn and I had worked on for the better part of a year revising the policy and procedures to get rid of a lot of extraneous, unnecessary information and to try to get it down to um, a minimal working document, which was still four, five, six pages long. But th this is not a bylaw amendment. Yeah. It needs to be it's, approved by the congregation or what? Well, no, no, this is this. What he's proposing is actually adding to the board's job description in our policies and procedures. There's a section in the policy and procedure doc describing what the Board of Trustees does. There's also a section in the bylaws for what it's worth, but mm -hmm. there's apparently one in the policies and procedures too. And what Tom is suggesting is that we add to that job description about making amendments or proposing amendments to the bylaws. To, to the policies and procedures? No, to the, to, the art, to the articles of incorporation and the bylaws. Well, but don't they have to, but don't those things have to go to the congregation for a 
approval yes. for the bylaws? Yes. Well, that's what I was I, asking. Yeah. Well, I'll let Tom explain. Yeah, let me be clear about what we're what this proposes is clarifying the issue that the board has in fact the authority to propose amendments to the bylaws to the congregation or amendments to the articles of incorporation to the congregation. Now, that's what I was trying to clarify. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but all this is doing is giving is assuring that the board has that authority to make just as we did with the uh, Memorial Garden in which we may do with the um, seven principles that we, the board, can put forth a proposal to the congregation. Okay. But we already actually had that. You're just reiterating it by adding it in this policy. Yeah, procedure. clarifying it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, because it's in the it's in Robert's rules uh, for, for a governing body to be able to do that, to present something to the, the membership of whatever organization it happens to be. Um, for uh, the membership to to consider. So this just is authorizing us to do what we just did with the two with the two bylaws that we just addressed. It's Sounds also good. authorizing us to do what we already had the authority to do. It's repeating. Yeah. It's putting it there so it's clear. And and if you don't have a parliamentarian handy to go wading through Robert's rules, or if anybody questions the board's authority. Uh, to do so, that in fact the board's policy is here, and then if you really need to dig into it, you can go dig into it in Robert's rules. Okay. Any other discussion? Thoughts? Sounds good. Okay. Um, then as the motion that's on the table. Let's vote. Hands up or get your Zoom hands up. I'm checking Catherine's vote. She says yes. So that's four. One, two, three, four. For the motion, two against. Well, you have to actually ask oh, for that. Catherine got, no, she didn't get it. Sorry. What, Tom? You actually have to ask for those who are against. Other words, otherwise they're considered a, an abstention. So okay, who's against? Are you raising your hand, Doug, or are you abstaining, or are you frozen? It was <laughs> <laughs> a little slow. Okay, two I'm, again. I'm I raised my hand. I've okay. I've got I've got some bad connection <laughs> okay okay i'm 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 in favor oh wait are you in favor of the adding this motion or supporting the motion doug yeah okay all right so there's yes. one and five four i think in favor one two three catherine was four okay five one so maryland can sort all this out <laughs> Like but five, five motion favor. passes. Motion passes. Yeah. Okay. Then the since we separated these things, the 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 sub D that I propose that we consider would be as uh, adding to the job description. So we would have A and B as they are the the newly adopted C, and that D would be review and comment of member, and this is a motion. My motion would be adding a sub D to 3.2 of the board job description in the policy and procedures, which would be review slash comment of board per, of member proposed amendments to the bylaws and or the articles of incorporation, including rejection of such proposals, such proposed amendments if found by a two thirds majority of the trustees present to be inconsistent or redundant with the existing bylaws and or Articles of Incorporation, period. Reasonable efforts may be made to improve or enhance an otherwise worthy proposed amendment. Is there a need, second? Need a second to discuss. Second. Okay, you have a second? Discussion. Right. The discussion, this goes back to um, 
the the bylaw as it now exists and was used last year to reject the proposed amendment of one of our members was it just says that we have the board has a period of review and a review and comment and in two other places in the bylaws it says that members can submit um can submit bylaws and then there's also the bylaw that says that the board can review and you know review review members uh proposals but it doesn't anywhere say absolutely that the board can reject it but in fact last year the board did they said that the one bylaw submitted was redundant and um would have caused conflict and confusion in other parts of the bylaws if it was um, adopted as it was proposed. So what I'm trying to do here is to have a board policy that says not only do they get, does the board, as the bylaw says, get to review and comment that the board can reject a bylaw amendment if it is in fact judged to be inconsistent or redundant with the existing bylaws or articles of incorporation but then adding the caveat that reasonable efforts may be made to improve or enhance an otherwise worthy proposal. And that being, if the proposal has merit, the judge and the board says, well, this has certainly got merit, but it's got a problem with wording. And it maybe it belongs in another place in the bylaws than where it's suggested. So that if the board chose to do that, they could either ask somebody to help that person make it more or less problematic and more acceptable. So that that's the, what the amendment is. And it goes back to where um, I felt that there was confusion because it says in two places, the members by amendment, proposed amendment needs to be able to get on the floor of the congregational meeting. And yet it also said that the board can review it, which is almost in implies that if you're going to review something that you have some ability to say no this isn't going to work so i'm trying to clarify in our board policies that we do have a certain responsibility to see that there isn't redundancy or inconsistency but if the idea has merit that we can try to work with the person to see if it could be um, a better and less problematic amendment so that's my introduction for what um, what this says. So it's a separate motion. I, I guess I have one, <clears throat> well, there's one possible issue. Suppose someone's making an amendment that deliberately wants to change one of the bylaws and therefore is inconsistent with the bylaw because they think the bylaw needs to be changed. How are you going to handle that? Well, that would be an amendment to um, an existing bylaw. And if the amendment um, was clear and could be um, could be well addressed and understood when it became a motion on the floor, even if it was you know inconsistent with what's there, but it, there was reason for it to be updated, that bylaw to be updated, that at least if I were on if a board member looking at that, I'd say, yeah, um, this is a different approach, but uh, I guess it needs to be aired and see what the congregation thinks about it. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe the wording needs to be <clears throat> adjusted a bit to make that clear what you just said, that, that you could still change an existing bylaw deliberately. Well, so, see, uh, I would like to propose that that kind of language is already in the, is in the bylaw. We spent, I was a part of the team or on the board when we revised that particular section of the bylaws, which I believe is Article uh, 15, Article. Section 3. Is that right, Tom? Well, it's Article 16, yes, is the one on the I have to do like Roman numeral stuff. Article 16, Section 3. And uh, I think what art is in Article 16, Section 3 in the bylaws is adequate and adding to the policies and procedures just it doesn't really um, clear up or make it easier to deal with that situation, I don't think. I mean, there's a lot of judgment in what had to happen or how it happened. Yeah, it's just, 
and uh, putting more words around it. I'm not in a policy. How does do my opinion, obviously, um, doesn't make that um, more doable. I don't think. I think it's covered in the Bible, in other words. Which, well, for what it's worth, I could read to you. Okay, let me let me let me read that because you 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 may you you may have a convincing argument. It says that we that board has six weeks to review an amendment that's going to come before the um, annual meeting, and it says the six weeks is for the purpose of the board or board designated persons to examine the proposed amendment for continuity with the existing governance document, and as needed, work with the persons proposing the amendment in an effort to maintain consistency or continuity. And that yes. particular section has been amended uh, both in 2022 and 23. So what you're saying is you think that's got it covered and we don't need any other policy to address it. Right, it is open-ended sort of when it says things like maintain consistency and continuity. Um, and work with the person, but I think that's probably what we have to do. I think I agree with that. Otherwise, it gets very complicated. You have to consider every little case that might come up, like I just suggested, you see. Right. Yeah. Um, right. Even as a maker of the motion, I think you've got a good, um, you've made a good point. And uh, I think you've got a good point. We did a good job, Tom, is what I'm saying on the bylaws. <laughs> way back when <laughs> yeah any other thoughts on this policy and procedure change that would be sub d of 3.2 okay no other discussion then let's call the vote uh, if you're in favor of the motion, please raise your hand. <laughs> if you are, you know, I've been trained. If you're against the motion, please raise your hand. Uh, Catherine, what are you doing? Oh, she put a little thumbs down. Okay. <laughs> the motion fails. There we go. And Tom still smiles. <laughs> what what was the uh for um Marilyn, what was the vote? Did you get was it you I, you I didn't see any for and all against. I didn't okay. get Doug. Doug, what was your vote? Doug's having connection issues. <laughs> lost <laughs> lost <in> the mountains. <laughs> Five against. Lugo, what was your vote? Um I didn't <laughs> so okay. That I, I voted against that proposal. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. That was kind of fun. In a strange way. Uh, let me get back to our agenda. Okay. We have completed everything. Let's see. What time is it? Quarter past the hour. We have about 15 minutes left. Um, I added a couple of items of unfinished business uh, when we amended the uh, agenda at the beginning of the of our meeting. But prior to that, there was a, a reminder of vacant board of trustees positions that we have for moderator and historian. I don't know if anybody has any. This is not motions or anything. This is just kind of FYI. Yeah. We, uh, again, we have those two open positions. The historian's been open for a very long time. Moderator, um, we usually get that, Lynn, if Lynn's still around, maybe not, but um, we usually get that assigned like kind of in a just in time sort of way, right before the uh, annual meeting when we need a moderator. So if anybody here uh, knows of someone that wants to do moderating of annual meetings, please let them know. We're yeah. shopping. Maybe we'll ask those kids. Maybe this is gonna be like the dominated team. Shouldn't do it like that. What, Tom? You wanna well, add something there? Yeah, and we, we are required to have a moderator. It's supposed to be for the entire year in the event we have a, uh, you know, a special meeting. But I can tell you from past experience um, when Mary Lou Johnson, uh, even, you know, when she was still a member of the church, said that um, she was not going to serve anymore. It was a scramble. 
to find somebody. And we finally did find Gordon Diddens. And Gordon did it for at least one year, maybe two years. And then the next year he was going to do it, he had COVID. Right. And they, I was asked to be the moderator, which I was uh, for two years. So um, it, it, I urge the board not to wait till the last till last minute because it's a scramble. Nobody wants that job. <laughs> <laughs> Marilyn, don't put that in the note minutes about nobody wants that job. <laughs> it's an awesome job. <laughs> yeah, it's challenging, but we can say that um, since I was designated as the parliamentarian, that I would be, as I was with Gordon, at his right elbow um, during that to help him with with things like that, and that can still happen. The historian I talked at your suggestion, Betsy, with um, Susan Tyler Babkirk, who has been the designated historian for a long time, but in a lengthy letter, she said that she hasn't done anything for a, a quite a while and that it is um, a task almost um, of passion. Um, we have many files in the basement we are supposed to be keeping track of all the things, the various officers and the various things that happen with bylaws and articles of incorporation. So it's um, it's also, well, it's a position that, that's vacant, essentially vacant, officially now that she said she will not do it anymore. So I just wanted to bring it up that we have a position that we're supposed to have appointed and we don't have anybody in that position. Okay, thanks, Tom. Catherine wants me to tell everybody that she nominates Lynn as the moderator. <laughs> <laughs> that'll that'll bring Lynn back to the meeting. It's a great idea. That would be great. <laughs> would. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Lynn, Lynn's head going up and down? Oh, she's back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> she's like, what? I'm still here, and I'm paying very close attention. I'm just cooking my chicken dinner here <laughs> and I would not I don't think I would um no that would not be very fun for me thank you though <laughs> Gilbert said it was fun <laughs> okay and Catherine has a question what does the historian do Tom described it just a little bit but it like uh I guess to summarize what Susan said it's a task of passion or a, you have to be pretty passionate about the history of the church to take it on at some well, level or something like that. And it does involve some technology of savvy, it sounds like, because you're gonna have to translate or, um, I don't know, go down in the basement, and dig things out and get them properly translated. Is that it, Tom? Stuff well, like that? Just scrolling the bylaws real quickly here, trying to find exactly how it's described. Uh, it's <laughs> membership. It uh, oh. I believe she said that it needs to be digitized. So digitized. the historian needs to be very well familiar with how to do that on the computer. Well, that's urging or suggestion. Um, and anything to keep track of records would be better than nothing at all. It's the, it says the historian shall be a member and be appointed for the fiscal year. The historian is responsible for the archival storage, both paper and electronic, and retrieval of the church's historical documents, especially regarding those events and activities that should be recorded for the benefit of the future members of the congregation. The historian may or may not be a trustee. We're probably going to have to live with this gap for a while, but anyway. Or keep looking. Or keep looking. There you go, Tom. Keep looking. Keep bringing it up in our unfinished business. So, uh, and then I also have on my unfinished business list the bylaw amendment that Lynn and Tom will bring forward next uh, month, I think, in March, right? Yeah. Unnamed um, content, yes. It, just so it gets, oh, well, I see a hand up from Mr. Ekrit. Dan. Just going to ask at the end of the meeting when you're done with the normal business, if I could 
make a couple of comments and an announcement. Sure, of course. Betcha. We're almost done, Dan. We should have time. Yeah, okay. the th thing I wanted to bring up, so it's just under unfinished business, is under Article 9, <laughs> Public Relations, Section 1, both Nancy Avery for the Council, uh, Social Justice Council, and Todd have brought up the point that this is almost virtually unworkable in that the name of the Unitarian Universalist Church of Spokane or UUCS virtually can't be used by anybody unless the board approves it. And the board only meets requirement 10 times a year, which really hamstrings anybody who has to do something fairly uh, quickly. And Lynn and I worked over the last four or five days to produce a what, what we think it would be workable, but Todd hasn't had any input since he's okay. on schedule. So we need to postpone it till next week when we'll bring forth an actual amendment, but we'll have some input from Todd. Perfect, thank you. Public relations, that's what it is, right? Uh, okay. Well, one little note, Tom, I suggested that adding that wording on digital access, uh, the, the wording I suggested to add should have uh, commas on both sides of it. Actually, that was in response to the position paper that I submitted for a review by the board. But you're you're correct, and the amendment that we're looking at has wording that wording or very similar wording to acknowledge that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. We got it. And on the other one about. Uh not taking a public position. I think we don't want to necessarily tie the hands of a future congregation if there's something really, really important they want to take a public position on. Mm. So that, yeah, we could discuss that next week, but what we propose right. Right. not to do anything like that, the congregation, and in fact, the board could do those kinds of things, but we'll, we'll deal with that next next month. Right, right. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, and then also, I think we talked about, I don't know if we did or not, but the last item on the unfinished business is the endowment team report from Karen Thornsteel about a topic that's come up there. She requested that we wait until March because the endowment team hasn't met. They couldn't meet in this month because of something. Probably, you know, Dan. Dan, aren't you on the endowment team? Anyway, um, so we'll... We'll catch that in um, next month. We'll hear from them, the endowment team. So, um, who, so the last little bits of business before we close tonight's meeting, um, I'll get you in just a sec, Dan, is uh, do I have a volunteer from the board for the agenda setting, which would be the Wednesday prior to next month's meeting? We usually get that done. And Tom and Doug and I got it done in about half an hour, 45 minutes. Um, last week. I can't remember when we met, but anyway. So a volunteer for that? That's our floating board member who attends the executive agenda setting meeting the week prior to the board. Okay, I can volunteer. Yay, I was sort of looking at you, Luba. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And um, the date for our next meeting is March 27th. Uh, just kind of following the monthly cycle. Any issues with that? We'll be good to go. But with with that one, you know, Todd said he would be talking to Lilia with now. Uh, uh, yeah, and I talked to Lilia too, Tom. Oh, just, uh, okay. Yeah. Are are we okay with four o'clock or would it work better for her if we moved to I have I haven't heard I've started talking with Lilia, but I oh. haven't got a meeting time change. So Okay. Still in progress. Does anybody else have an issue with the current time? Are we still okay with four to five thirty for board meetings? I could I could go either either way. If four thirty would make it easier for Lilia to attend, I'd be much in favor of that. Okay. <laughs> I don't mind either. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, Dan, I think we're done with our official business, so go ahead. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I've just had a couple of things as past president I, and a little announcement. I, I am on the endowment team, 
uh, it's kind of Karen saying, but uh, just to point out that we are roughly at 800,000 in there, and, and we gave 33,000 this year, as you probably already know. Uh, there may be, unfortunately, for some of us that uh, are passing away during the years, there may be additional funds coming in during this next year. So that may, you know, go up fairly fast from 800. I don't know yet. We don't know. None of us know. Uh, the second thing is, is that I volunteered uh, with Rebecca uh, to run the art team. We haven't had any art uh, up on the walls for a long time. I see Julie's gone, but uh, she likes to put up works from you know, from our our, court, our our church overseas, and uh, and also, uh, I'd I'd like to get some people within the church and perhaps outside the church to hang a show. A lot of churches like uh, East Shore over in Seattle, I used to go to, always had art up every weekend. As did the big big primary church uh, in Seattle, and it was it was always fun to see that. And I hope you all agree. I will talk to uh, the ops team in addition to Rebecca to make sure this is okay, but it's primarily a schedule issue, as I understand. So if you have any thoughts on that, give me, uh, let me know. And then, wait, 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 Dan. Uh, Dick, Dan, mm -hmm. I, just a key word about what you're just are promoting here at the end. I don't know. I, my computer must have worked or something. An art show. Well, it, 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 are you talking about a big art show for the whole church? Is that what you just mentioned in the latter part of your little conversation? No. I'd like to have a rotating art show of people from the church and maybe outside yeah. hanging work in here. So we have something going on all the time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good to me. The, the next item. Uh, any thoughts on that? Any problems yeah, with that? Yeah, okay. yeah. I want to add a thought that Catherine texted me. She said she would be happy to reach out to local artists and work with you on that, Dan. Support that. Oh well. Cath mm -hmm. Catherine. Catherine Trust Trail, board member. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, she knows how to get a hold of me. Yeah. Okay. The next thing, uh, real quick. Uh, Doug, you, I don't know if Doug's still on, but uh, Dick is. Uh, I had an understanding that there was some problems financially with uh, where we're at during this year. And uh, I heard uh, Doug say that we're, we're getting along okay based on our, <clears throat> based on, uh, you know, the, the different pledges that we've had during the year. What What is happening there? Do we have any numbers on that, Dick? Well, they're, they're a couple months old now. We'll have current members, numbers next year, next, you know, March. But um, you know, fourth, fourth quarter numbers were, were okay. But, you know, it's, it's definitely behind what, what's desirable. But it's, it's in line with what's expected. Just that we, expectations weren't that good this year. Okay. And uh, my last, my last, and thanks, uh, Dick, for that. But my last thing is, uh, I hear a lot on, on, uh, you know, where we're at with our, all our documentation within the church. There's been a big upgrade to it the last few years, but I'm not hearing anything on where the church is going. And and initially, some years ago, when I was in there, I worked for a strategic plan to see where we're going. In other words, another way to put it is, what are our priorities? What are what do we really need to do? And by that, I mean, what 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 is uh, the key things that have to happen? Are we in trouble with our facilities? Are we really uh, want to put emphasis on our membership and on and on and on? And uh, I really like to see something from the board uh, that says these are our priorities or this is our strategic plan for the next five years, whatever. And 
and I'm I'm not hearing any of that. And uh, because we sure need to get new people in and and get this thing back on the road as far as building up uh, attendance and so on, and get it back where it was like ten years ago. I think all of you want to see that. So you're the board, <laughs> and uh, I'm looking for great things from you. Okay, Tom, you got a comment? Well, as a matter of fact, on the ops team agenda, um, I think in January, maybe even this month, there was an item about the uh, about the board updating the strategic plan. The last time it was 2017, and it's supposed to be done every five years. And yes. we received no notice of a reminder from the ops team or anybody. It's just been lost. Um, it's it's just kind of been lost perspective. So your reminder, and in fact, it was on the ops team agenda, is um, you know pretty earth shaking. Yeah, if somebody would do a little uh, pushing there. I, I I think it'd be great. And for instance, uh, you know, we've got we may have some real facilities problems. I know we did a few years ago, and I haven't heard about that. And we had the deferred maintenance program and it kept being bled every year or two all the money drained out of it for something else and i don't know where we sit there do you have any idea dick what we have in the deferred maintenance fund mm -hmm. well it, okay well, it's it, an ops team I'll thing look, I'll I'll look that but, up. yeah it was not too bad in the i think 20 to thirty thousand range but we recently spent fourteen thousand dollars upgrading the furnace and I assume that's where that money came from. Which, which furnace? Because we got about four of them. Well, I know we got the main we got one, six of them. The main one for um, the sanctuary. Oh, okay. yeah. I think it was replaced. Yeah. Well, four real old ones out up above, you know, the RE room up there. But uh, anyway, those are the questions. What is our what are our priorities? Where do we really need? What, what do we need to put the emphasis on the next few years? Well, and, and the, for those purposes, uh, if people will remember, the strategic plan, part of the reason for that was that every year when people would design the budget, would build a budget, they would be looking at the strategic plan and saying, Yeah, that's right. And this year, that was one of the major reasons for it was to give us a guide in the long-term perspective about what would, should we be doing before it just falls apart? We don't have any money whatsoever to fix it. Yeah, well, so we don't just float through things and put money in areas that we don't need to and not spend it in areas we do need to. Yep. That's Point. my little stump speech. <laughs> Ian wants to add. Hmm? Ian. Yes. yes, to follow up on what Dan is saying, I would like to um, request that we have a visioning mm -hmm. session for the entire congregation sometime within the next three months. Um, it's been years since we've had a visioning session, and um, I know some either the bylaws or, or some other policy govern, governance uh, document said we should have visioning uh, sessions at least every two years. And uh, the whole congregation needs to be involved so that we can get a real handle on where people want to go, what they want to see, and then from that up, upgrade the strategic plan. And I'd like to hear what the rest of the yeah. board has to say about that. Uh, what do you mean by visioning sessions? Would it be like a congregational meeting or uh, some kind of workshops or what? No, it, it, it would be a congregational meeting. Uh, we've done this before. The Memorial Garden came out of such a visioning meeting where about 150 people got together and and just made a huge list of everything that 
uh, might be the goals of the church. And then people voted, um, you know, what the what their top three priorities would be. And, and so we sort of came up with um, what was most important to a good deal of the membership of the church. And um, I really, I think it's high time that we did that again. Mm -hmm. Because there have been a lot of changes and mm -hmm. uh, Yes, I think that's true, Jane. And I agree with you, but uh, remember that uh, the, a lot of the church members won't know the details that the ops team and the board knows about, uh, like furnaces, like all these other things. So uh, the ops team has to be particularly involved in this and have a big part. But uh, yeah, some way that between the two, between between the board or between the three, the ops team, the board, and, and our congregation, we should be able to put something together where we're going. How about we put these items, particularly the um, strategic plan, which, as Tom mentioned, has been brought to our attention and is the responsibility yeah. of the board. How about we put that on the agenda? And I'm, I'm looking at the what we have right now for a, a strategic plan. Mm hmm it's not a huge document, but it looks like about 10 pages. And it's kind of concise. It shouldn't be too hard for us to um, maybe have an effort to review and look at that strategic plan. We can put that on the agenda for March. Yeah, if you said send that out to us. And the other thing regarding the visioning, Gene, um, and I think you're on the right track, or I just did a word search on both the bylaws and the policies and procedures for vision and visioning, and nothing's there. I know, um, and that's, uh, I think that be will be an amendment that I make at the next congregational meeting that we have at least every two years a visioning session for the whole congregation, because it's kind of impossible to write a strategic plan if people don't know the bigger picture of where we want to go. Unless visioning is a part of the strategic plan, plan, planning process. But at any rate, if you do want to propose an amendment, please propose it early so we have time to, um, <laughs> work, to work with it. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, with that, Thank I, you think all. I will- Wait a second, I'll, I'll make, I just looked through the budget. I don't see a line item for you know, deferred maintenance or that kind of thing. I'll have to ask Rebecca Adams what's what's going on there. Yeah. It, there, there should yeah, be some kind of item, something where you stash money away for. Uh, what, what's the term they usually use for that in accounting? It's a special accounting term for. I think it's a separate, uh, separately, separate um, account. But we it are was. contributing to it every budget but you're probably not if yeah, you're looking you know, it's, where it is yeah it's it's not depletion there's there's a spent separate but i didn't see i had to find i had to find out where it is in the budget because i didn't <laughs> see the i didn't see it in the wording there <laughs> yeah we were targeting to get it up to a hundred thousand so that we if we had to replace the roof we'd have the money yeah, and I, I, did, last did i heard a, we had twenty thousand the account, there's a counting term for that when you Right, deferred maintenance. Well, there's a yeah, there's another term for fund. That. What deferred maintenance fund? Yeah, it was the third fund. I, I looking through my treasury information, it's the budgetary yeah. shortfall reserve fund we had. Yeah. To, it's probably under a different wording in there, but yeah, I, it might I be couldn't a, identify it. It used to be in the budget, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep looking anyway. Thanks for listening to me. You betcha, Dan. And Jean and Lynn, everybody that joined our Linda Green didn't hear from you, but thank you for being there and Betty and everybody. Appreciate it in the board mm -hmm. team. Mm -hmm. So I think we are adjourned. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Gil. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.
What? 